Hello, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta, and this is a walkthrough video for students in the Undergraduate Social Networks course at UMA. You have an upcoming major assignment uh, with nine steps in which you're going to be looking at some real-time, uh, recent, current, social media information, specifically from the social media network Twitter. And I want you to characterize it as a social network using the software skills that you're developing with the package Node XL. And I want you to interpret it in terms of the social network characteristics you've learned uh, earlier in the class, having to do with measures such as degree, uh, centrality, uh, and other features. Uh, you might want to look for cliques. Um, those are all sorts of things that you should be able to do now, that you will be able to do uh, in your uh, uh, assignment, and that I look forward to seeing not at the end of this week, but at the end of week 12. I've given you a little bit of extra time to work through this because working with real-world social networks uh, is sometimes a little bit more complicated and can have hiccups along the way. Uh, than working with uh, a prepackaged social network data that we know is already secure. So I have listed here, and, and you can see this, your uh, major assignment description. Uh, in order to complete this, you're going to have to sign up for an account at twitter.com. This is step one. Uh, it's important that you need to do this because it authorizes NodeXL to carry out some searches of the Twitter data. What I am not requiring you to do is to use the Twitter service. I'm not requiring you to post anything about yourself whatsoever, so you don't have to worry about that in terms of privacy. But you do need to sign up for an account there, and I encourage you to do that as soon as possible. Uh, then I'll ask you to open up NodeXL. And I'm going to open up NodeXL right here. Uh, always make sure that you have the Node XL tab at the top uh, clicked so that you get this ribbon of possible options. On the left hand side of those options is an option called import. And then we're looking for an option that says from Twitter search network. This is important, an important point not from Twitter list network, not from Twitter users network, but from a Twitter search network. I click that and I have a number of possible options. Now, the first time you use this, there may be a pop-up window that appears. Uh, and in order to carry this out, you have to authorize NodeXL to be used uh, and, uh, by your Twitter account and for NodeXL to use your Twitter account. You see down at the bottom uh, here in the video of my screen, I have three options. The first says, I don't have a Twitter account. It may take longer to import the network. That's actually quite true. It could take a long time. The second option is I have a Twitter account, but I've not yet authorized NodeXL to use my Twitter account to import Twitter networks. Take me to Twitter's authorization page. You actually want to select that second option uh, and go through and get yourself authorized. Follow all the instructions that appear. I've already done that. I have a Twitter account, and I've authorized NodeXL to use my account to import Twitter networks. So once you've done that, let's take a look. Uh, now, back in the Twitter search import window, you'll want to click Advanced Search Help. Uh, that is a hyperlink. Uh, it takes you to a web page. And on that web page, you learn about advanced search tools. And there are some really handy ones here. Okay, When you use Twitter search, what you're doing is you're looking through all sorts of people's Twitter posts, where they, in 140 characters or less, uh, not only talk about ideas, and so you can search for ideas or concepts or phrases, they also refer to others. So we can see that here with the use of the at sign, at Mashable, it's referencing the person in Mashable. 
um, you can also look at hashtags. When a hashtag goes in front of a phrase, it indicates a subject. You can use uh, what's called Boolean searches, Boolean logic, uh, love or hate for an idea, uh, a post containing the word love or the word hate. You can put a phrase in quotes if you want an exact phrase to be used, or, or you can just type in different words and it uh, looks for a Twitter post, also called a tweet, that contains both words but not necessarily next to one another, just somewhere in there. Uh, I want you to think very carefully about what you want to search for using Node XL before you actually go ahead and do it. Why? Because the to head back to Node XL here, its import from the Twitter search network uses a particular level of permission to access the Twitter data. It'll only allow you to access a certain number of uh, Twitter search information per hour, a certain number of pieces of information. And once you get past that point, Node XL says, hold on, we've reached our limit, and now you have to wait for an hour before we go look for some more. So if you search for something uh, like, oh, I don't know, NCAA Final Four in March of any year, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get flooded. You're going to get so many tweets that you aren't going to be able to keep up with it. You're going to choke your computer to death. You have to, on the other hand, search for some person or term or idea or hashtag, which is a subject matter, uh, that is somewhat popular so that you get a certain number of nodes. I want you to find a network that isn't completely empty. Okay, well, how can you find out, before you get committed here, what sort of thing you're looking for? Uh, you could head to Twitter itself. And I'm going to do that here. I'm going to do a search up at the top of Twitter.com uh, in the search bar here. Uh, I'm going to search for something really common. Let's oh oh final four. I'm even going to put it in quotes so that it has to appear as a phrase. <clears throat> so if I then click to uh, not just the top tweets but all tweets, I'm going to be shown that well there was a promoted tweet at the top. But then, oh, there's one that's occurring now, and two seconds ago, and three seconds ago, and four seconds ago, and five seconds ago, and ten seconds ago. Okay. Uh, now that's Final Four. Uh, what if I say NCAA Championship? Okay. Again. Uh, oh, March Madness, right? There's a subject. Two seconds ago, nine seconds ago, 13 seconds ago, 51 seconds ago, one minute ago. That's really common. You're going to get choked with that. So uh, what about March Madness? Oh, well, that seems like a, a more something more limited, right? Seven seconds ago, 15 seconds ago, 20 seconds ago. You're going to get huge amounts of data. You're going to get flooded because it's really popular and current. Uh, a, similarly, uh, oh... You know, what if you search for uh, uh, famous uh, movie? I just want to talk, think about how people talk about Oz, some new movie. Okay, and I click all. Now, 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 three seconds ago, four seconds ago, eight seconds ago. Okay, so you want to avoid those kinds of search terms. You're going to crash your computer. And you have to think strategically about this. Also think ahead. Don't try to do this all in one day. Uh, you'll end up in trouble. Um, what if I search for something a little less popular? People talking about Brunswick, Maine. I don't know what I'm going to get. I'm just betting that we're going to end up having something a little less popular. Yeah, now look at that, okay? We have 
uh, Brunswick, Maine as a search term occurring a few hours ago, 10 hours ago, on the 6th of April, yesterday, two days ago, three days ago. Okay, so now you have something that is, some people are talking about, but, uh, you know, not everybody's talking about. Is this something you might want to talk about? Something you might want to search about, rather? Sure. What about Dexter, Maine, smaller town? Here you might have a little bit more of a trouble. If you're looking for a network, if you're looking for people who are talking to each other about a place called Dexter, Maine, you might not find too many uh, conversations because I'm sure there was one uh, Twitter post, one tweet today, but goodness gracious, then the last one was the 3rd of March and then a few in February. You're not going to get much network information because there aren't a lot of people talking about this. Okay, that's something to think about. Uh, one thing to, one, one suggestion I have for you, excuse me, is to think about the use of the hashtag. A hashtag is a subject matter that a lot of people are interested in and they start to follow each other because the use of that hash mark creates a link that connects to all other Twitter posts that also use that hashtag. It's almost like it's a group that gets together to talk about a particular subject and they're more likely to refer to one another, to reference each other using the at sign and thereby to create a network tie, because that's what our tie is going to refer to. So I'm going to take a look here prospectively at a particular hashtag. You can look around and search for all kinds of hashtags. I'm going to use a particular uh, hashtag called ME Politics, standing for main politics. And I'm going to click all to look at all of them on Twitter. Now, I'm not using Node.xl yet. I'm just doing a little bit of research. And I find, oh, here, that there's a fair amount of conversation, but not certainly every second, happening using the ME Politics hashtag. It's being used by a number of different people. And there are a fair number of at signs, at Press Herald, at Demerit Dan, at Celtic3 at Bangor Daily News again, at Ellen Muller, okay, at LePage2014. So those are accounts that are being referenced. Some of these people may be communicating with each other. I think I've found something that I'm going to look at. I don't want you to look at main politics. I want you to look at something independent that you're interested in. But look around and, and look for hashtags, try to follow them, and, and look for something that's talked about a lot, but not a, to a huge extent. Uh, I'm going to hashtag ME politics. I'm going to head over to import, import from Twitter search network, and I am going to, at the top uh, of this dialog box, I'm going to type in my hashtag, ME politics. I want to add an edge. I want to define my tie, to use a synonym of edge, again, for every reply or mention that's occurring in that uh, search network. Okay. Uh, I want to do that because that's what a tie is. That's what a connection is in a social network, people communicating with one another. So when I do that, I've asked you to limit to 500 people, change your limit, and I'm using the arrow key. Okay. Uh, so I'm just looking at the assignment here, and we're already well on through the list. Okay. So then I'm going to click OK. And I don't know how long it's going to take to collect all this information. Am I going to bump against the one hour limit or am I going to get something relatively soon? Let's find out. 
it tells me at the bottom of this dialog box, now that it's grayed out, that I'm getting five pages, six pages, seven pages, eight pages of data, nine pages. I'm going to get a large network. 13, 14, 15 pages of data. But it's done. So that was the sweet spot. It didn't take too long. It's going to say, oh, text wrapping is going to be turned off. Do you really want to continue with the import? Sure, why not? I'm going to hit yes. And now look. This is the beauty, right? For previous assignments with Node Excel, which you should have already installed and learned how to use on other people's computers, um, you had to type in vertices and you had to type in edges. Here are the vertices all listed. You can, it even includes image files. You can find out how many of them are by scrolling all the way down to the bottom and notice that the first two rows are filled with labels. So there are 281 minus two nodes in this network. How many ties are there between those 281 minus two, those 279? nodes, those 279 vertices. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here under the tab edges, edges and vertices, two tabs at the bottom. Oh, okay. So I know then that there are 543 connections between 279 individuals. Great. Uh, I can do some other things here to move forward in the assignment okay i say in the assignment having found an interesting twitter network create a meaningful sociogram in which you use space node design and edge design to depict patterns in who is having twitter conversations with whom who's referring to others uh, and who is mentioning others uh, okay in the next Step, I say, referring to chapter five of the Hansen text and your work earlier in the semester in measuring network characteristics like between centrality, degree, things like that. Use the graph metrics command in Node Excel to measure as many network characteristics regarding your Twitter network as possible. Be sure to report these network characteristics in your assignment. Okay. Then I'm going to ask you to talk about. Uh, uh, these network characteristics, your choice of Twitter search, and the patterns that you find. And I want you to write a small paper in which you talk about what they mean. Okay, I'm not going to write a paper for this video. Um, I'm not going to continue in that mode, but I'm going to show you how to do those other two steps. The ones in which you take a look at uh, network measures and in which you visualize a network. And the nice thing about Node Excel is that it allows you to combine the two. Let's go to graph metrics and in the ribbon, and I'm going to hit graph metrics again over here. Now take a look. You should be able to see some kinds of uh, measures. Under overall graph metrics, uh, there are a number of uh, options. Okay, it tells you about how many connected components there are in the graph. You should know about components. Maximum geodesic distance, the diameter of the network is there. The graph density, what does it mean? Well, I already gave you some information. 543 connections in a network of 279 nodes. That's not a very dense network. How dense? Well, Node Excel will calculate it for you. So I want to include these. I also uh, want to calculate, well, is this going to be a directed graph or an undirected graph? There are mentions. Those that have directions. So I want to calculate in degree, out degree, centrality measures, right? Uh, and you might want to choose some others. You might want to choose eigenvector centrality. Eigenvector centrality to review is not just how many uh, nodes one other node refers to, but how many uh, nodes those alters also refer to. Do you uh, converse with highly conversant people? Well, I'm going to go down in the bottom and I'm going to calculate these uh, metrics. Okay. Great. And now, look, there's an overall metrics tab down at the bottom. 
it tells me, oh, let's find the graph density. <laughs> right, 0 0.00295. That's saying that essentially uh, you have a graph, uh, a network, that is 0.295% full. Uh, only about three out of every thousand possible ties are actually there. Uh, you, you, where's the average geodesic distance is 3.12. The maximum geodesic distance is 8. Oh, lovely. You also then get um, some other measurements. Measurements for vertices have been inserted uh, in degree, out degree. Some of these are zeros. Wow, okay, that's good to know. Uh, is, are they zero for everybody? See, this is new. I've never seen this before for this particular network at this particular time. This is down at the bottom. Oh, no, there are some people who are isolates. That is, they have no in degree and no out degree. But there, as we scroll through, there are other people. Uh, this individual here called Bruce Burgoyne, you may know this person, has an out degree that refers to 14 people, but nobody is referring to that person, to that account. On the other hand, you have uh, an individual, Arnedo12, interesting, who refers to four other accounts, mentions them, but excuse me, is referred to by four other accounts, but refers to nobody else. And then there are people who have values that are both. I'm going to show you a nice feature of Node Excel right now, which is this feature called sorting. Um, you see these little triangles here? If you click on them, you can decide that you can sort the whole set of data according to a particular column. What if we wanted to find the individuals who get the most references to themselves? We could sort from the largest to smallest. And now if we head up to the top, we notice right away that the Bangor Daily News gets referenced the most. The second most referenced is main GOP. The GOP stands for Grand Old Party, which is a euphemism for the Republican Party. Then there is uh, Mike Tipping, Jay Savage, and Sun Journal, which is a newspaper in Maine. Uh, Maine People is another one. I believe that's the Maine People's Alliance. I'm not sure. You may want to check on that. And we can go on and talk about that. What about out degree? What's interesting, take a look at Bangor Daily News, is that Bangor Daily News gets 55 references. 55 instances in which a Twitter post refers to the Bangor Daily News Twitter account, but it itself refers to none others. Who are the individuals who are talking most about others, about other uh, Twitter networks, other Twitter accounts? Well, we'd sort according to out degree from largest to smallest, all for jury. Now, Bruce Burgoyne, is there. Remember, we spoke about him. Dirigo Blue, which is a blog, uh, No Way 90, and Jay Savage 207, who is also in our uh, top 10 in degree list. So we can do similar sorts for betweenness centrality, okay, for closeness centrality, for eigenvector centrality. So now you can start to use these sorting tools in order to come up with uh, rankings. You can use it to um, come up with uh, a, a number of isolates. Because now that you've sorted both by in degree and then by out degree, let's also do that, largest to smallest, you will have gotten a set of people who have uh, zero out degree connections and now also zero in degree connections and there's a handy feature in uh, Microsoft Excel in general which is that if you start to select a certain number okay because now I know everything below this level here uh, below uh, row 145 
row 146 and below. Uh, everything below there is going to have zero in degree, zero out degree, complete isolates. If I select those, oh, you notice over here in the lower right, there's a count that's increasing. It's 160 of them, 192 of them, 220, 232, okay. 272 sets of individuals. Oh, sets of cells, <laughs> right? Across these two columns. If I just go to one cell, I notice that it halves to 136 when I just look at one of those columns. So what does that tell me? Uh, there are 136 cells that I've selected that have zeros in both of those columns. 136. Each of those is a separate vertex, vertex especially when I make sure I'm looking at the vertices tab. A vertex is a synonym for a node. So I have 136 isolates. Now I have a new piece of information I can share. I haven't even started to visualize yet. I want you to play with these statistics. I want you to think about the network measures you made earlier in the semester, and I want you to work at incorporating that into a paper where you talk meaningfully about who's really important uh, as a, in terms of the, the, the structure of the network, uh, about the kinds of ties that are important as well, Okay, because there are also some ties here, and those are important. So while we're here at ties, you might want to notice over here that there's a relationship date. You'll notice if oh, we sort, let's sort that from newest to oldest, that uh, they occur in recent times. Because I limited my search to 500 individuals, the search went back in Twitter, starting from the present, going back into the past until it hit that mark. And that mark was, was met on uh, April 2nd, 2013. And then it stopped at that point. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to show the graph. And it's going to be a mess. Okay. It looks like a bunch of dots. There's some lines. Who knows what they mean? <sighs> okay, what can I do with this? I can do a few things. The first thing I can do is I can try to group these nodes together. One way to do that is through uh, uh, the grouping function. Under groups, hit group by cluster. And I'm going to hit the Clausen, Newman, Moore. Uh, uh, algorithm and then I'm going to put neighborless vertices into one group you know if you don't have a neighbor and give them all the isolates their own group okay now it's created groups and it lists them it says it's created well, 13 groups so what? So what can I do with that? Well, so now I can begin to decide that I'm going to lay out my sociogram according to groups. Groups are clusters. Groups have among themselves a relatively high network density. That's what those algorithms work with. I'm going to choose a layout. Uh, one of my favorite is the Harold Corrin Fast Multiscale because it's a spring embedded uh, uh, um, algorithm for making visualization. And then I'm going to select layout options under layout. And I'm going to say I want to lay out each of the group's graphs in its own box. And I want to sort the boxes by group size so that you have the biggest groups first and then the smallest groups below them. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to, I want to show ties between the groups, and I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to refresh the graph, and let's see what happens. OK, 
the first thing that happens is that all the isolates are over on the left. Um, so they all have their own group. Uh, and those isolates are not going to be as important in the visualization that I'm going to make uh, because, well, frankly, they don't communicate with others. It's nice to know how many there are, but I'm not, I'm not going to have much else to do with them. I'm interested in the connections that are happening over here. Take a look at that light blue group, for instance. I have a guess about what that is. It, it, it's it's a, a star formation, right? There's one uh, vertex, one node in the middle, and uh, it has references to lots of others. Uh, but, uh, you know, those individuals aren't referring mostly to one another. There, there's I see one that is, but otherwise, no, not much. Who, what vertex do you think that is? I have an inkling uh, based on what we saw in the statistics, but let's find out. Let's hover over it, and I'm going to click on it, or hover over, and it's Bangor Daily News. There it is. Okay. Um, now, the neat thing about Node Excel is that if I go to the uh, vertices over here, and I click on a vertex, it will highlight and show me in a highlight what that particular vertex's name is. Uh, so I can do that by hovering over, and I can also do it by uh, just clicking on that vertex as well. This is Mike tipping here. Okay, That's interesting. What's really neat about this feature is that uh, it creates a different box for each group. Each group is a set that has a relatively high network density. Uh, it creates different colors for the nodes. That's really handy too. Uh, and I can begin to learn more about those individuals. What can I do to create a little bit more information? Well, I can make some choices in visualization. What if I want to highlight some really important players in the network? Uh, one thing I can do is I can go to those vertices. Uh, I'm already on the vertices tab, and I can head over to the graph metrics. Okay, what if I want to look at uh, between the centrality? Okay, if you have one person who's in the middle of all these tweets, who's getting some sent to them and is sending some more out, who's in the middle? Let's sort largest to smallest. Okay, Bangor Daily News is going to be big. The main GOP is going to be big. All for Jury is going to be big. Mike Tipping, The Sun Journal. Somewhat related to Indegree, but not completely related to it, because Bruce Burgoyne is also, Bruce Burgoyne is also high and has a high out degree. So what if I take those first 10, that's rows 3 through 12, and I want to refer to them in a special way. Well, I know it's 3 through 12. I can head over here and I can, for 3 through 12, then I can take a look at their label. And, oh, if I look at this vertex label, I can show a vertex as a box with text. Okay, I can do all sorts of things. I could uh, create their labels here and, and put their labels as texts here. Okay, so I could do that. Let's see how that works. Hey, that's kind of interesting. It highlights who those individuals are. That's one choice I might make. Another choice I might make is to take a look at the shape column. The shape allows you to look at an image. <laughs> and what do we have? Node Excel has already taken the profile images from Twitter for us. So I could do that. Uh, let's try that. That's If I look at the codes up here, excuse me, I see that an image is number 11. So for those first 10, the 10 most uh, between central figures in the network, 
I could ask for images to be created. Oh, wait, where are their images? Why are they not there? What happened? It didn't work. Well, there's a reason for this. It's a complicated computer program. And one of the things that we have to look at is under groups, and you wouldn't find this on your own. I only found it by looking hard the long way. Under group options, okay, once I click that, a box appears and it says, well, what colors should be used for the group's vertices? And what shapes should be used for the group vertices? Should they be the shapes specified in the vertex shape column on the group's worksheet? Or, which is um, right here, it's telling you what the colors are and what the shapes are going to be. <laughs> so it's mandating that that is going to be what is going to happen. Or, group options, the shapes specified in the shape column on the vertices worksheet. That is what I just wrote right there with a bunch of 11s for, hey, use the image. So in order to override the neat group colors, I want to switch to the shapes specified in the shape column on the vertices worksheet. Okay, little details that are useful. Now I'm going to refresh the graph. And boom, what do I get there? Now I have this image that shows in a graphic way who are the players that are involved. Ah, it's a little big. They're, they're occupying so much space. I want to make them a little smaller. Well, maybe I could play with the numbers. It's a sum size between 1 and 1,000. What if I take, I don't know, take that down to 20. I could see what 20 would do. Just play around with this. I don't know what 20 will do. Will it make it larger or smaller? There's a certain amount of monkeying that's required for visualization. Yeah, it made it a little smaller, but I can still see kind of what's going on. Sweet. Okay, what are some other choices I can uh, make? Well, I could um, I could do some combination. I could also do a label at the same time. Now I'm like, you know, it's starting to get messy, right? So you have to uh, balance, you know... How complete do you want your visualization to be versus, you know, how messy you want it to be? I think that's a little bit too messy. That's just my take. It might not be for yours and uh, for your network. I'm going to go with that. It's just a choice I'm making right now. Okay, on top of that, we have a lot of straight lines here in, 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 in the network. As I showed you in a previous lecture, one of the things we can do under graph options, if I right click in the, in, in the graph pane and then select graph options down here and then uh, head over to edges, we can curve those ties. And now when you curve them a little bit, it's easier to see where the different ties are going. We can also show bundles, graph options. We can bundle them together. So they're even more tightly brought together, like, you know, putting cables together behind your computer. Oh, now that starts to show some patterns. You know, the mic tipping is, is communicating with this uh, orange group over here. The orange group, which is, if I hover over, I find out it's Andy Parkinson and Jay Savage. Okay, and those folks are speaking with this Dirigo Blue group. Oh, yeah. And uh, Dirigo Blue with all for Jury and Bruce Burgoyne. Okay. And then there's the Bangor Daily News, which is it, it conversing with the Orange Group. Oh, that's really neat. Okay. Very little contact <laughs> with between the Sun Journal and the Bangor Daily News. N no direct contact at all. Only some indirect contact. Pretty cool. The Sun Journal and the GOP, the main GOP, uh, are in the same group, and they're also, uh, you know, who are they getting in touch with? You can begin to talk about these patterns. Great. Uh, there is another way that you can uh, start to visualize that is uh, not related to groups. And so I'm going to go to Layout Options. 
and I am going to say, uh, let's get rid of visualizing by group by not laying out each of the graphs groups, but laying out the entire graph in the entire graph pane. Typical case. This is how to undo the groups. Okay, and I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, uh, I'm still getting those neat colors, but now I have, a, uh, you know, a, a different uh, layout in which uh, the uh, spring embedding algorithm is allowed to work. Uh, what kind of choices can I make for visualization here? Uh, I can do something interesting, and by the way, you could do this in uh, within graphs as well, but what about autofilling? Uh, what if I want to use color not to indicate group membership, but something like popularity. Your vertex color, okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my shapes and their lovely size. Okay, now I just have a bunch of different shapes. I could try all kinds of visualization methods. Ay, 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 does that tell me much? I don't know, it's, it's certainly pretty, but it doesn't tell me much out of a spiral. Oh, very pretty again, but what do I know I, from that? I, I don't know. So I'm going to head back here. Sometimes the Sugiyama tells you something. Sometimes it tells you nothing. In this case, it's all too flat. I'm going to head back to Her Harold Korn Fast Multiscale. Spring embedding is nice because it connects. Uh, it puts uh, connected nodes close to one another. I want to... Um, work with in degree. I want to uh, color, excuse me, in autofill, I want to color the vertices according to, ah, in the drop down menu, in degree. And let's take a look at options. Vertex of color options. And so this says, the largest number is going to be blue, and the lowest number for degree is going to be orange. I don't like those color choices. I like the idea that blue is kind of a cold color, and orange is hot? Nah, red is hot. I like that option. So, uh, I'm also going to ignore outliers, because there's one... Hang on, I'm going to cancel here. If we look at this and organize by in degree, largest to smaller, there's one node here, Bangor Daily News, that has a really big in degree. And I don't want them to have the only red one. I want there to be a little color variation. So that's fine. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to ignore outliers. An outlier is an atypical case. So swap the colors again. And I'm going to head over here. And make a high number red, the largest number and the smallest number, and everything else is going to be in between. Ignore the outliers. And let's autofill now. Refresh. And of course, I have to go to groups <laughs> and skip. The group option. I already did this colors specified in the groups worksheet. So I have to say, no, 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 I want the colors specified in the vertices worksheet. Let's try that now. There we are. This is really interesting, right? There are some individuals that are perhaps uh, referred to a lot that aren't in the middle of the network as it's visualized by the spring embedding algorithm. That's kind of neat. That's kind of interesting. So what else could I do here? I could uh, do a different kind of autofill in which I think about the vertex size. What if I'm interested in those that are most central? and I want to make those smaller or larger. Okay, So I could select vertex size options. 
under vertex size, I, I picked betweenness centrality. Oh, heck, why don't I do closeness centrality just to be a little different? And let's select vertex size options. So now I can make vertices as small as 1.5 or as big as oh, 10. I'm going to ignore outliers again. Hit OK and autofill. <laughs> and now I get interestingly a whole lot of largeness why is that my guess is that I have a lot of outliers and the outliers are all small so I'm going to try to use a logarithmic mapping again that that's a, a scale that increases increasingly and let's autofill now Okay, and I don't get that much variation. I get some variation here. These are small individuals who are in the outlying regions. I have larger groups here. This size option is not working as well for me. So perhaps, you know, I'll, I'll want to either change my measure or it's not telling me very much visually. Or I'll want to uh, change my options. Maybe I want to vary the size a little bit more. Maybe I want to allow some to have a vertex size of just 1 and others to have a vertex size of 20. Yeah, there's a little bit more variation there. Well, that's kind of interesting. This is another option that I could use. I could change shapes. I could change the opacity of, 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 of these. Opacity is how much they show up. So for those with an out degree of zero, maybe I want to make them go away. Let's see what happens if I do that. Ah, now only the highest out degree players really appear as nodes. All the rest are invisible dots. Okay, so now I can much more easily pick out the uh, ones that do a lot of referring. They're the most visible. They're the most colorful. You start to see all the very powerful visualization possibilities that are there. Um, in a, a Twitter network. So what I want you to do is I want you to play with these ideas. I want you to play with what you can do in that small box, what ideas you can represent. Maybe you want to create a couple of visualizations if you're feeling enterprising. One having to do with groups, another having to do with autofilling, maybe a third that combines them in some way. I also want you to focus on the network statistics, the characteristics, the measurements that are made. You know what they mean from looking through your uh, uh, textbook on social network analysis. So use that. Interpret it. Tell me what that means. Um, you can add labels here, you know, uh, so that you can have me understand exactly what's going on. And finally, when you're done, and of course this is not done, just as I'm not done and uh, I haven't written a paper yet, I want you to incorporate it all in one final paper. To, to do that, to incorporate this, remember you right-click, and then you will uh, want to save your image to a file that then you can uh, uh, incorporate into a Microsoft Word document. You can, in image options, a nice uh, possibility, you can include a header. That would be a title, and, and in uh, that header would be a small bit of text that would describe your picture. Okay, and then you could create whatever title you feel is appropriate, is descriptive, and full and complete. And then it will save when you save your image. It'll save on top of that image. Uh, it'll save a, a nice text header. That will work very well when incorporated into a paper. It looks nice. Uh, you can even number your sociograms, figure one, figure two, figure three, refer to them in the, te in the text.
This is now an assignment that is asking you to understand Twitter, uh, learn about what that is, learn about what it does, learn about what connections mean, uh, figure out how to collect information from Twitter, make it a meaningful collection about a meaningful subject, uh, and <laughs> derive meaning about what actual patterns you see. What does it mean that there are two newspapers here in, in this discussion of Maine politics who have a high in degree, but not a very high out degree? Uh, what role do they play in the discussion of Maine politics online in this social network? Who are those other players? Who is Bruce Burgoyne? Find out if you're writing your paper and you want to get an A. Do a little bit of research. Identify who the public nodes are. This is public data. So it's okay for you to, to do a little looking in to what's going on. As you take the time to do this work, don't try to do it all within one hour, please do get in touch with me if you have questions, concerns, hiccups, difficulties, and do it as soon as possible. Uh, if it's the night before and you have two hours to complete your assignment and you're just hoping that I'm possibly not yet asleep or spending time with family, you may have some trouble. If you give me a, a fair amount of time to get back in touch with you, I'll try to do so as quickly as possible. Best of luck. Uh, I hope you're able to complete the assignment. And more than that, I hope you're able to have some fun with it. Pick a subject that it excites you, and the assignment itself should be exciting. Best of luck.